Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Park Management, the basics. Okay, so here we are. We're starting with an empty sandbox park. Let's put in a couple of entrances. And there we go, there's one. Lined up. Which, of course, isn't always the easiest thing in the world to do, which we all know and uh, love to hate. So, uh, yep, moving it around, moving stuff out of the way. Is it going to generate an auto path for me? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. What I didn't notice at this point, uh, to those with a keen eye that will realize, is that gate is the wrong way round. Uh, so, as you can see, the gate that's already there has the gates facing backwards into the park, and I've got them facing the wrong way round. So, it would allow guests coming from the other side to leave and pay to leave. New concept to make your park profitable. Pay to leave. Anyway, let's get some path connected up and start something fairly simple uh, in regards to park management. Uh, because as far as I'm aware, there aren't really many park management tutorials out there. And um, I, so I thought I would do one for you guys. Uh, it's actually an issue that uh, someone's mentioned recently. So I thought, why not? Let's uh, show people what you need to do and uh, give you an idea of the basics of uh, your park management. So let's put some shops in. Uh, one of the basics for park management, of course, is your staff. So let's go with a chief beef and then cosmic cow milkshakes and a staff room. Now, staff rooms became relevant uh, a few re releases ago when they were added. And to be honest, I actually think it's a fairly bane, baneful mechanic. Um, before when you just had a member of staff in there and they never left um, that was great uh, but the new mechanic you'll notice these shops the path hasn't bothered connecting to them automatically uh, so again what I end up doing is moving the whole thing and shifting it to the other side uh, but going back to staff buildings uh, your staff now have energy requirements so they need a staff room to go and rest and the quality of that rest is also dependent on the scenery that is around the uh, staff room itself. Now I haven't, for this, because it's a basic tutorial, I'm not going to add any kind of decoration or anything. Uh, I'll throw a couple of rides in shortly, but you'll see why not, because I'm going over just the basics of management. So the buildings are in. Now what we need to do, of course, is connect the path. and this. Is running at real time so this was me uh, now this is recorded footage that I'm now narrating over um, but I've left it at original uh, speed uh, so that we can actually see everything that's going on uh, so here we go shops are now in that's it staff are there staff happiness and the little green energy bar underneath is the amount of energy that they have and their trainees now, of course, before, when a staff member was able to be trained, see, there we go, no scenery. Not the end of the world for this, because it's just a tutorial. Um, but also, uh, previously, you didn't need to train your staff by them going to a building. They just trained. Whereas now, they have to come out of the shop that they're vending in, they have to go to a staff room, and that's where they get trained. Um, again, it's an interesting mechanic. Um, I'm not saying whether I agree or disagree with it. Um, I mean, it makes sense. If you want to train your staff, they're going to need to go to a staff room, right? Surely. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, it's kind of, kind of creates a bit more realism, but at the same time, is it necessary? Not all the time, I wouldn't say. Um, but the park management, a lot of people slate um, the park management in Planet Coaster. It's not actually that bad, and it's very comparable to the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. Um, I mean, I played all of those games uh, all the way up to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, of course, uh, when it was a fully 3D game. That was amazing when it came out. And these guys have a solid history of building very good park simulation games. And, of course, it was originally Chris Sawyer uh, was the guy who um, done the first Roller Coaster Tycoon game. Um, and, of course, Frontier Developments, some of the staff there worked on the original uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon games. Uh, now, I was trying to move these around, and in the end, I was just like, oh, for goodness sake, let's just delete it, because it's annoying me now. Delete the extra bits of path. There we go. Again, I'm not paying too much to cl close attention to aesthetics here, because this is purely from a tutorial perspective. 
Um, so we've got a ride in, we've got a couple of shops. That's fair enough, don't really need much else. Okay, let's dump in a coaster. So go to, there we go, coasters, go to bl custom blueprints and go to whatever type of ride we want to drop in. I started with this one, which again is uh, one I've downloaded from the workshop, so I've subscribed to it. It's a great ride, it's uh, El Loco, I think it's called. El Giro Loco, which is quite a cool ride, but then I thought, no, this is a tropical map, so let's put a tropical ride in, of which I have a blueprint somewhere. So I started looking around to see if I could find it. And there we go, Tropy, tropical themed coaster. So that's it, get that. Again, drop in the blueprint. So again, kind of showcasing somebody else's work. I do like this, it's quite a nice little compact coaster with quite a good amount of theming, but it's not loads of theming. Um, so it's just a nice little coaster. Drop it into the right height. So shift it about a bit until we get there. And up a little bit, there we go. And of course, that's the one thing with uh, custom blueprints as well that you get from the workshop, which is another note. Um, people post them as blueprints but forget that they may have modified the terrain when deploying the ride components so it means you go to the workshop you download a ride and you go to place it into your park it's actually impossible uh, unless you adjust the terrain how the person had it originally adjusted within their own park um, which can make some blueprints difficult um, you'll find the more experienced blueprint creators they're all rides that only have scenery pieces uh, and buildings and there is no raising or dropping of terrain anywhere and they stay under the 4,000 piece limit because anything over 4,000 pieces you can't turn it into a blueprint it has to be a park so a sandbox park with a ride in it um, which for some people of course they're not going to want to download a park with just one ride in it they want the actual blueprint so they can drop it into their own parks there we go we'll put this onto testing which it should uh, complete doing at some point in the near future and let's go back to the actual park management so here we have all the different tabs, staff, click on the infinity symbol for all staff and you can then see the current position. So staff training, there we go, train and train. So it doesn't go up to the next level anymore and you can see the energy bar is slowly decreasing on the staff as well. So let's hire an additional vendor and drop her anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Right click, we only need one. So for every two uh, shops, I say you need three vendors. Uh, so that they can cycle and uh, now let's get a security guard as well so drop him in so he's already not particularly happy which uh, is surprising seeing as you've just hired him so he's currently free roaming so let's give him a roster now to create a roster all you need to do is down in the bottom right hand corner let's change it from select one item to select multiple items and then you can go and he will patrol between those three items so save work roster. Now what I haven't done is actually put him onto that work roster yet. Uh, now let's uh, also get a cleaner of course, fairly important. So put him down as well. And again, I went to create another work roster just to reinforce. So new roster, again, change it to the add in the bottom right hand corner, and then select all of the objects that you want the person to patrol around. And there you go, there's your roster created. Now what you need to do is actually click the work roster and change it. So my new roster and that member of staff will now go between those three points. So you can see two rides, two shops, one staff member is assigned to that roster. So let's find the security guard and assign him the second roster. It's identical, I know, because it's a small park, uh, but this is just the basics. So my new roster and you can see he instantly changed direction there and he's now going to patrol between those three points. Now security, um, you're also talking uh, cameras as well, which are fairly important. They have a 15 meter radius and they improve the security for your guests, for when people get pickpocketed and or when groups are being unruly or vandalizing anything, um, you get the idea. Uh, so here we go, put in a bench just so that people can sit down after they've bought some food and drink. Uh, not going to go with any picnic benches, of course, because I'm just keeping this layout as it is, uh, not doing anything fancy. So we go to add a new roster and edit, and you can then change uh, what is actually on the roster. So there you go, you can see the three items that are currently on that roster. And if you wanted to, you could now add or remove items. Um, 
just play around with what you can and can't select uh, and it gives you an idea of how they can patrol between those items. So we'll close off the uh, management menu and we haven't actually got an entertainer yet uh, or an entertainment point. So what you want to do is again you recruit the entertainer but see this person here isn't particularly happy it's always a problem so increase salary is your first go-to to increase happiness in the job role so I've increased this person's salary the security guard up to a hundred from 75 and that should improve his happiness again we've got the vendors they're all fairly happy so let's come back out and what do we want to do now let's go and train this member of staff so there we go now that person instantly trained because they're resting at the staff building now you'll find as the person people's energy level drops the person will jump out of theirs and they'll go to the staff room and the spare member of staff will take over now of course if they both run out of energy at the same time you will have a particular shop with no staff at all for a period of time until somebody can come back again but the mechanics aren't actually that complicated Right, let's get an entertainer. Let's go with the theme which is tropical, so we'll go with Tiki. Of course, uh, Frontier are doing the who's the uh, best entertainer at the moment. I don't have any particular preference if I'm honest. Now, what you want to do is put down the entertainment point for your entertainer if you want them to be in a particular place. So there we go, done. We're not putting any fancy decoration around it as I've already said. So right, we want to create a new roster so add new work roster, select the entertainment point, give it a name, the previous ones of course I didn't name, so entertainment point, save work roster, okay, now we've got Tiki selected still, so take him and put him to the entertainment point, and there we go, you can see he's now walking to the entertainment point and he will stay there until he runs out of energy and he will go to the staff room to have a rest. Now, so all of your staff now go and have a rest, apart from the people that are operating the rides and the people that are operating the entrances of the rides. They are apparently robots. So you can see the uh, Morio Engel wandering. Uh, in, his happiness has actually increased slightly. You can't really tell from here, uh, but it has gone up a little bit. Delmar Ritchie is about to run out of energy. So they will soon jump out and the Seth, uh, sorry, Saw Cordova, who is resting, uh, will take over. So here we go. This is what happens once the energy levels decrease. Quite a few people are actually in the park, considering all there are are two shops and two rides. Um, and there's no scenery at all apart from the fact that the blueprint that I dropped has got a few bits of uh, scenery around it, of course. Um, but the other ride, the chair plane, I just dropped in. But there we go, there we go. Those two members of staff have now swapped positions. So he's gonna have a rest. Delmar Ritchie, and off he goes. And his energy red levels will now begin to increase again. And his training has now gone to level two. If you remember, ages ago, we selected him to train, but as I said before, training doesn't happen now until they go to the staff building so whereas before you could just click and it happened instantly they now need to receive their training in the staff room but as you saw from the silhouette all they seem to do is just stand in the closeted darkness uh, and don't actually go anywhere so entertainment point I'm just highlighting there to say that obviously Tiki is uh, standing at the entertainment point realized I forgot to open the roller coaster which is why there was no one in the queue suddenly Everyone pours in that direction like I've just opened the seventh wonder of the world. Uh, surprisingly. Well, I suppose it is the only roller coaster. Now, security cameras we were talking about. So here we go. So security camera, as I said, it has a range of 15 meters, but it's quite expensive to run. Uh, in fact, we'll show that in a second. So put down two cameras, come out of that and have a look. $50 a month it costs to run but it does improve your park security and reduce vandalism. So they are worth having, but obviously you have to watch your profits and your losses, uh, which we will have a look at the finances in a second as well. And also, of course, there is marketing. So um, like the previous roller coaster games, you can have marketing campaigns. 
So Moro Engel, still not particularly happy. Let's train him. There we go. His happiness has now gone to green because he's got more training. Let's increase his salary a bit more because we've just upped him to level two. He should now go to the staff room and get his training. Uh, so Tiki One needs to be trained as well. So we'll select him for training and we'll up his salary or her salary. And we can come back out again. But all the levels there are pretty good. Uh, obviously, the bigger your park gets, the more management you have. Uh, we can see here that the Cheriplane is making $454, um, dollars, and the other ride, because I've just opened it, is still running at a loss. Uh, so there's no security issues. Guests are fairly happy. Uh, the only thing is there, you'll notice, is toilets, uh, because I haven't actually put a toilet in yet. But you can check uh, the average spends and the amount of money that they use in your park by grouping so adult groups teen groups and family groups now you can specialize your park to particular groups of people so you can go for a family orientated park and engineer your park to rinse those uh, people of as much of their dollars as you possibly can but again with the management side of things you have to remember that you need to do include everything now something simple like cheap chief beef and cosmic cow milkshakes which were two of the original shops from alpha before the game went live you don't actually really need much else uh, to keep people satisfied in regards to thirst and hunger the other shops are all nice to have of course when you start theming up areas like this nice little pirate themed uh, toilets uh, get it to the right height place it down and then connect it up with paths so that our guests can actually go and relieve themselves and stay in the park for longer which at the end of the day is the aim when it comes to the management side of your park. You're aiming to keep your guests in the park for as long as possible, as happy as possible, and take as much money from them as possible. But it is managing the staff that can be fairly annoying. Um, I mainly do sandbox um, levels. I don't really go with the challenges that much. Uh, so I've now just deleted a massive section of path because, again, we all know the pathing issues that this game has, um, which is a bit of a shame, really. I do think that there should be an option for massive open areas of path um, rather than the way it works now, where you can use Silverette's cheat um, by slowly filling in the area and it smooths it all out with each time you add a piece and delete it and then add a piece and delete it. But I think there should just be the option to put some big uh, square open places or ovals or any shape that you want. Even if it's just a drag and drop uh, as an actual item and have paths connecting off of it. Because from a coding perspective, if you were to just do it as a large area that has free walk in it, so no pathing, no AI pathing, um, it's just they choose, if they're going from one side to the other, they go straight across. If there's some food places there, they go there. Um, amending the AI in regards to that could be a fairly interest, interesting concept uh, because I do actually work in IT myself. Um, but there we go. These are all things. Uh, I'm waiting for the next piece of DLC as well. Let's see what they come up with. I'm hoping for some Jurassic World Evolution content at some point. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if they think of introducing any new themes. So, of course, the most recent being the adventure theme, um, which Ashley Pashley was the lucky winner of my competition. But going back to the park management, uh, so staff are all fairly happy. Let's uh, have a look, waiting for customers to serve a normal. Okay, let's do training and Seth as well. Let's give him training and marketing campaigns, as I was talking about. So you have poster campaigns. Now each one of these um, will attract different groups, you just need to read and see what it uh, does, how much it costs, uh, and how much potential revenue you're going to get uh, from the particular campaign. So if you're not getting any guests, it's worth running a campaign to boost your numbers to improve your finances. So let's have a look. Finances, we knew this was going to happen, it's a small park, um, of course we're at a massive loss at the moment. But under park management uh, basics we will cover the finance side of things when I get to the more advanced park management. But for this, that's pretty much it. Uh, that should give you enough basics, again heading to staff building and heading to staff building to recover their energy levels, and a staff building can hold three people. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I know it all, and this was a basic tutorial for your park management needs. Until next time, see you then.